Our Bible reading today comes from John chapter 2, verses 1 to 11. On the third day, a wedding took place at Cana in Galilee. Jesus' mother was there, and Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to attend the wedding. When the wine was gone, Jesus' mother said to him, They have no more wine. Woman, why do you involve me? Jesus replied. My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, do whatever he tells you. Nearby stood six stone water jars, the kind used by the Jews for ceremonial washing, each holding from 20 to 30 gallons. Jesus said to the servants, fill the jars with water. So they filled them to the brim. Then he told them, now draw some out and take it to the master of the banquet. They did so, and the master of the banquet tasted the water that had been turned into wine. He did not realise where he, it had come from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew. Then he called the bridegroom aside and said, Everyone brings out the choice wine first, and then the cheaper wine after the guests have had too much to drink but you have saved the best till, last, till now. What Jesus did here in Cana of Galilee was the first of the signs through which he revealed his glory and his disciples believed in him. Well, it's good to meet together and have God's word read out to us. Today is the last week on the series Jesus and Culture. So what we're looking at Last few weeks had parties, friendship, and today is food. So we wanted to think about what are some common values and practices around food in our culture, and then look at how does Jesus see food and how he confirms or challenges our views on food. So that is what we'll be doing today on the top. The, I love food. It's great, isn't it? <laughs> it's great. Well, let's pray that God works powerfully in our hearts. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much that you are a provider. We thank you that you provided Jesus to rescue us, you provide us with your spirit to lead and guide us in the ways of Jesus. We thank you for your word. And we pray, Lord, that you will open our hearts, that you'll encourage us and shape us today. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Australian foods and our dishes are borrowed from all around the world, from Europe from Asia and the Middle East, and it's a great combination of all these different foods. You can see this in the restaurants around, the big uh, takeaway food places, but the delicious Vietnamese restaurants and Italian restaurants. And we also love a barbecue. Love a barbecue to have some seafood or some meats on the barbecue and gather around with our family and our friends and to share life and enjoy things together. There is debate over the origins of avocado on toast, lamingtons and pavlova. There are debates about these things, but we do agree that we love food in Australia. We love it and all different varieties of food. Now, I've got some coat of arms up on this next picture. This one uh, in South India, they've got the elephant there. We've got a few animals on ours. Not every country eats animals from their coat of arms, but uh, we, we do. We, we, does anyone want some kangaroo? We, we, do, we do eat those, don't we? Now, in some cultures, you eat all the food on your plate, and in other cultures, you leave some food left over to show that you are satisfied and happy. Same thing with burping. Some cultures, at the end of the meal, you should burp to show your satisfaction. Other places might not be so polite. <laughs> now, in all countries around the world, we agree that food is good. All cultures gather around food. Maybe the food is different and there's different flavours and smells, but we all gather around food. It might be a Sunday roast or a biryani or a bulgogi. And food is tied to our celebrations. Our great celebrations, parties, weddings, and we gather around food and enjoy it all together. Food marks the seasons, 
When the stone fruits start to arrive, nectarines and plums, it marks the arrival of summer coming soon. And now as it cools down, there'll be mandarins on the way, won't there? Now, in the past, in the church, there would be a service for farmers and the crops. And there'd be a time to thank God for how he provides and trusting him in the growing of crops and food. Sometimes food is restricted. Uh, Many would say, eat fish on Good Friday, not beef on Good Friday. Hindus don't eat beef. Muslims don't eat pork. Some people struggle to have money for food. We know some people uh, near where we live. We remember them talking about a family of seven. The way they provided food for their family for the, for the day was to cook a chicken, put it on the table, and that was food for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. People have different budgets for food different uh, amounts of money that you can spend and how special and important the food is. People have different budgets on the kind of restaurant that you can go to and the doors are open or closed depending on how much is in our wallets for those places. Now, to put this all together, in Australia and around the world, food is enjoyed. It's tied in with our celebrations and food can unite people. It gathers us together, but it can also separate us. Food is a basic human need and it gives us energy and fuel for life and to coming to church on a, on a cool day to be here and to celebrate. Now, there's some of the values and practices around food. Let's now look at how Jesus talked about food. Now, Robin read out in John chapter 2, Jesus turns water into wine And so in this story, he saves the embarrassment of the hosts and he records the first miracle that Jesus ever did and it was to do with with drink, food and drink, his great provisions that Jesus makes. So what they had was incomplete. It was not enough and he provided what was lacking for them. In Mark chapter 6, 41 to 44, Jesus feeds the 5,000. Verse 41, Jesus took the five loaves and two fish, looked up to heaven and blessed them. Then, breaking the loaves into pieces, he kept giving the bread to the disciples so they could distribute it to the people, and he fed everyone. Like manna from heaven, like birds provided in the desert, Jesus is a provider. He gives. He loves with compassion. And he provides. And he calls on his people and us to trust God with our daily food. And in the Lord's Prayer, he teaches us this, doesn't he? Matthew 6, 11, give us today our daily bread. Give us what we need. And then he applies this later in Matthew chapter 6. Matthew 6, 25. Uh, that is why I tell you, do not worry about every about everyday life, whether you have enough food or drink or enough clothes to wear, isn't life more than food and your body more than clothing? Look at the birds. They don't plant or harvest or store food in barns for your heavenly Father feeds them and aren't you far more valuable to him than they are? So when we worry about food, Jesus challenges us that he will answer that prayer Give us today our daily bread. He will answer that prayer because we know that God knows what we need. We're valuable to him. So trust God with food for your daily life. Jesus not only provides, but he also satisfies. In the Lord's Supper, Jesus took bread and wine to help the disciples remember about his sacrifice. So if we think Mark 14, Jesus took bread and blessed it and broke it. Verse 23, and he took a cup of wine and gave thanks to God for it. We did this last week, didn't we? We paused to remember the sacrifice of Jesus. He said, this is my blood, which confirms the covenant between God and his people. It is poured out as a sacrifice for many. And in this, Jesus uses food as a symbol. 
It uses food as a symbol to remind us of things. We gather around food in all cultures, don't we? We gather around, and Christians gather in a different way, in a special way. We gather to eat bread and drink wine to remember the sacrifice of Jesus. With Jesus' death at the cross to be the centre, the uniting event that brings us together. Oh, this is the special gathering of God's people to remember his death. Another symbol Jesus used was with bread, John 6, 35. Jesus replied, I am the bread of life, he said. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry again. In the culture back then, bread was like one of the basic foundational foods they would eat, the essential for life. And so Jesus is saying that he is the basic essential for life filler of your body, but more importantly, of your soul. That he will give spiritual well-being. So for those who are lost, those who are unfulfilled, they can find spiritual satisfaction in Jesus. Oh, he is the hope. And it says that he is the bread of life. Jesus rose again. He is alive and he gives life. And everyone who trusts in him, we're confident in Jesus, that we will be at the heavenly banquet with him Matthew 22 so Jesus is a great provider he provides for the physical body and also he provides for our souls there's a story out of Africa of a famine and a plane landed on a remote airstrip with supplies They put the cargo on the airstrip. There was food and water and Bibles piled uh, on the tarmac. The people struggled forward, thankful for help to arrive in their community. Then the aid workers noticed something surprising. The people weren't going for the food. The people were going for the Bibles. They were starving. They were hungry and they were thirsty, and they're hungry and thirsty for the words of God. In a famine, in trouble, they were hungry for God's words because in God's words, there is peace and life and hope that goes for all eternity. And having the Jesus, words of Jesus of greater value, value than anything else, it's greater value than food itself because Jesus satisfies in a deep and in, in a spiritual way. And in a world where there are hurts and struggles, when there's broken relationships and sickness, when we're feeling unsettled, we know Jesus is a provider. For those who trust in him, he cares for you. He has compassion on you. You are valuable to him. And he is the good shepherd to provide for you and to give inner like a peace that we can't explain, this inner lasting peace and the hope of eternal life. There's some of the principles that Jesus spoke of around food, how we use them as symbols. Let us think about, okay, how are those values and principles confirmed or challenged uh, by Jesus in our culture? Well, in one way, We could say this, enjoy food and be thankful. Now, next time you eat, this week, I want to encourage you, when you smell the food wafting around, put it in your mouth and savour the flavours. This week, maybe cook one of your favourite meals or make something new and pause and enjoy that time. Make it a moment where you pause and add meaning to your grace that day. Lord, my provider, thank you for this food that you've given to me. And teach it to your children and your grandchildren. This this thankfulness, teach them to savour and enjoy all the blessings that God provides. And because we know it doesn't matter how you eat, whether, whether you burp at the end of a meal or you eat with chopsticks or a knife and fork, that does not matter. But what does matter is that we eat in thankfulness to our God who provides for us. 
I remember in uh, COVID lockdowns, I started to do something different that I didn't usually do. I started to eat a lot of ice cream. Now, I, I don't normally have dessert. I don't normally eat much ice cream, <laughs> but at that time, I just started eating a lot of ice cream, and we enjoyed all these different uh, desserts at this time. Did you go back then? Did you like eat something or do something in response to the <laughs> stress and things that was going on? Well, for me, I started eating ice cream and lots of it, and I must say that I lacked self-control at that time, and. And that is a polite way. You could say, I lack self-control. That's a polite way. Or you could say, you're being a glutton, Jason. We could say it like that. And we want to be careful with food that we're not gluttons, that we just overload. And we want to... I was learning at that time, we want to learn to eat in moderation. Now, our culture has a concept of comfort food. And like on a day like today, maybe in a few months when it's colder to go home, when we're a bit cool to eat a nice soup and just to gather around and eat a soup. It's, it's nice, isn't it? Or maybe when you've had a stressful day, there's something you like to go and eat to be encouraged. And the danger is that we go to that comfort food before we go to God. That is the challenge for us. Now, though many of these things are fine, aren't they? They're fine. But we can go to, you know, coffee or to some hobby or TV or Netflix. But let us run to God first. May our comfort place, our place of safety, be with our Lord who provides and cares for us. Another way uh, Jesus challenges, encourages us, encourages us around food is to be generous. We want to be generous with food like Jesus is generous with food. And I must say in this community, it is wonderful to see the generosity that you show in sharing food. When people are going through challenges and food arrives at their house just to show love and practical kindness. To see in the freezer there is food there. So if a family or a student comes or someone individual by themselves, whoever, if they come, we can say, hey, here's some food, a blessing from the church. And it's great to see how you provide and care for other people through the provision of food. It's like uh, Pete's talk last week, the encouragement. Our homes are a place of refuge, place of kindness, and he encouraged us to use our gifts to serve one another and the gifts that we have received in food to give those to other people. And so it is wonderful. And, and all our gatherings, whether it's today with some cake and fruit, whether it's uh, friendship service morning tea, there's so much great food there, or if it's a fun food Friday at the university, we see people gathering around food, but we also see your generosity and love. So thank you so much for the way that you bless the people around uh, with food. It's wonderful. And praise the Lord, like thinking of uh, Fun Food Friday, The week before, there were 115 students. Last week, there were 110 students. And at 5 p.m., there's been 15 new people coming regularly over the last month. So we can praise God for that. And even better, there was nine students on Friday who met uh, for an Exploring Jesus course. And there are some people reading the Bible for the very first time in their lives. And we get to walk alongside them. And you know what? We can do that together because we all do Fun Food Friday together. We provide the food for those students and they meet around the food and we love them and show kindness. And then also we get to share them about the one who satisfies to the inner soul. Oh, it's a privilege and joy to serve with all of you and uh, to love people in our community all together. Another area where Jesus challenges and confronts us in a way is to be careful of food pride. Food pride, what are you talking of, Jason? Now, we can be proud of grandma's uh, cooking and her secret recipes. Is there secret recipes in, in your family? And there's, it's like, oh, wow, that food is fantastic and we enjoy it. And maybe there's pride. There can be pride in, oh, the, 
the restaurants we eat at and where we go and the kinds of places, or with MasterChef after you cook, oh, this is the big reveal of the, the meal that we've made and there's some active pride in our culture. Well, sometimes our passion for food can become a focus and even an idol in our lives. The pressure to create the perfect dish and have the perfect house and make everything look so good can be a distraction and can stop us from opening our homes and giving food to the people around us. Now, food is a wonderful gift, but it is not the pinnacle of life. It has, you know, it's important and it's essential, (laughs) but the the place of honour goes to Jesus, who is at the centre, walking with him. Our true true identity is not whether we burnt our food or (laughs) it tastes fantastic or not very good or whatever, That doesn't shape our identity. Our identity is shaped because you are made in the image of God and you are forgiven and you are loved by him and you are part of the great wedding banquet for all eternity. So perhaps if we go in that direction, we should shift our focus from food pride just to the simple ways of joy, sharing a meal, sharing a conversation, all in the spirit of Jesus' love and hospitality together. I might say that again. We need to shift our focus from food pride to the joy of sharing a meal, having a conversation together in the spirit of Christ's love and hospitality all together. Now, this is a good topic. Food is good. We love food. We enjoy it. Food is a gift from God. So knowing Jesus is a provider, knowing that he alone satisfies for the soul and also our practical needs, let us eat with thankfulness in moderation and serving others generously with the food that we have. Let's pray. Father, we thank you that you are a provider. Thank you for Jesus to save us, your spirit to guarantee us for heaven. We thank you for your word to teach us the ways of Jesus. And we thank you for Jesus, that he is the bread of life, that he satisfies. And Lord, if we're chasing other things, Lord, turn us back to Jesus. Turn us to him to be satisfied and find our peace and hope and joy in him. Lord, forgive us for times when we've been gluttons. Strengthen us to eat with thankfulness and joy with the blessings that you have given us. And Lord, we pray you continue to give us strength to bless other people with food. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.